Recently, it's come out that Cody is trying to sell his house for $1.6 million. According to some reports, his valuation of his property is not just because the house is situated on a beautiful piece of land or is a big, beautiful house, but he believes that the house is worth an exorbitant amount of money because he is a celebrity. The funny thing is, is that he's treating his celebrity as though it's something that he's worked hard for, he's struggled for, and he's earned. The truth of the matter is, brother, you hit the lottery. This isn't a career. This is an opportunity. You can tout how, so how rich you are and try to pretend to be wealthy. You could try to pretend to be a celebrity. You could try to pretend to be a star. But at the end of the day, this is something that is a short-term windfall that you have to take advantage of, or you can find yourself working for the rest of your days. Now, why do I say that? Because if this show gets canceled or he gets fired, will he be able to replace his income with a job or position or career or opportunity that's equal to or greater than the position or opportunity that he's lost. No, 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 no. My position is that he probably won't because at the end of the day, it's not like he's Jake Gyllenhaal or some other actor who's playing a character on TV. And when that show or the fans or audience gets tired of watching that show, the show gets canceled these actors can go on and portray a different character. In Cody's case, he's on television portraying himself. And once the fans or the studios or whoever gets tired of watching him portray himself and the show gets canceled, where do you go from there? Now, the first thing that I would say is whether it's a career path or you hit the lottery or whatever the case may be, the best decision you can make, the most sound decision you can make is your choice of partners. Who you choose to spend your time with and who you choose to invest mentally, financially, emotionally, spiritually, et cetera, et cetera, into can determine your long-term wealth, your long-term goals, and your financial longevity. For instance, if you are with somebody who is a support system, that person will be able to engage with you. They'll be able to give you positive and uh, valuable insights into how you can uh, pursue your goals, how you can maintain or build wealth, how you can maintain that wealth, how you can grow that wealth, and how you'll be able to pass that wealth on to your kids. And worst case scenario, they'll be there to help you rebuild your wealth if you lose your wealth. Now there's on a conversely on the other side of that, there is another partner who seems like they're uh, down for the cause and down with you and, and about it, 10 tones down, all about business. And that person is called what I refer to as the cheerleader. That's the person who's going to celebrate your wins and sit there and rah, 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 be in your corner and celebrate you and cheer you on and try to cheer you up when you're not doing well. Oh, you did the best you could. But at the end of the day, that person is kind of like a yes person because when you're up, that person is going to tell you how smart you are, how wise you are, how brilliant you are, how what great decisions you make and how awesome you are. But when you're down, they're going to tell you that mistakes were made, but those mistakes weren't your fault. Those things aren't your problem. You can get past it. These are obstacles. These are struggles because you're number one and you're the best. It's like that blind loyalty. Now, from my perspective, Blind loyalty doesn't help you pay the bills. Blind loyalty isn't going to be a true tool for you to be able to keep and maintain, build, and develop your wealth, your personal wealth, or build you up as a human being because they don't allow you to find your responsibility in your decision-making, the places where you may be culpable for things that happen in your life and it creates a problem, culpable, <laughs> it creates a, a problem in your situation, your life, your business, whatever the case may be. And because you don't learn those lessons and because you don't get that positive input, because you don't get that valuable insight, you continue to make the same mistakes. Like, I don't know, for as a, for instance, like you could have a wife or three wives that you wind up letting go and it costs you 60% of your income. And you keep making the same mistake because you're still arguing, fussing and fighting and feeling bad about the same old thing you were feeling bad about before. And somebody was your cheerleader and they were telling you that you weren't making any mistakes. Any idea who I'm talking about? Now, if I'm comparing Cody and Robin's wealth or their opportunities to a lottery ticket, what's the fastest way for a lottery person to go broke? The fastest way for that to happen is that they live beyond their means. They become overconfident in where they are and what they have and how long they're going to have it and how long they're going to keep continuing making that money. 
that level of money. This happens all the time with music artists, actors, uh, uh, <laughs> sports people. They start out their career. They think that they, oh, I'm going to be in here for the next 20 years. They have a three-year career, and then that's it. And the money they made, they have to carry on for the rest of their life. But they can't do it. And why? Because of the things that they invest in. A lot of folks, when they get that kind of windfall, because they don't know how money works, they don't know how investment works, they wind up spending their money on a whole bunch of stuff. Like they buy a bunch of real estate that they can't afford. They buy jewelry, cars, clothes, uh, expensive vacations. They eat out all the time. Fancy restaurants where they're constantly spending money instead of making food at the house or learning how to cook and learning how to conserve. And the bottom line is, when you look at that type of mentality, you have to ask yourself, are you the type of person who would rather have a $10,000 bag with a paper receipt in it or $10,000 in a paper bag? Because many of the people who win the lottery would rather have the facade of being wealthy. A lot of celebrities or Fox celebrities, D-list celebrities, like reality stars, like to portray themselves as being these vastly wealthy people, but they aren't. Because when you go to a house, that big, beautiful house on the mansion with all the cars sitting in front of it, the Mercedes and the Benz and the luxury European cars and the sports cars. And you see their clothes and you come out and you see their jewelry and they're wearing Rolexes and big fat dookie chains. And you're like, wow, this dude must be loaded. But if you pop open his books or their books, all of a sudden what you see is their credit cards are all maxed out. Their bank account barely has any money in it. And if it does have any money, it's like usually about nickels and dimes. And that's usually on the off time because most of the time is overdrawn because they done wrote bad checks because they bouncing checks all over town. So they have all kinds of fees on the damn accounts. And then you go into the house and it's a bunch of empty walls and, <laughs> and you sitting on milk crates, right? Because they don't have the money to be able to keep up with the facade. And you could have a lot of people who pretend to be wealthy but you don't know what their pockets look like. A good thing that my mom used to tell me story time, it doesn't matter what you pull up in because nobody knows what you showed up to the party in. Nobody's even gonna see your car half the time. And unless you invite them back to your place, they don't even know where you live. So get something that's gonna make you happy and that you can afford and that you can take care of. They have to invest wisely. Wisely investing in things, especially when you're talking about like some of the things, superfluous things I talked about earlier, you have to learn about a subject and study it. You have to understand it in and out. You have to be careful with who you trust and who you listen to and who's teaching you what. And in Cody's case, you can't take a little bit of information here and there and try to piece it together and break the rules. First, you have to learn the rules before you can break the rules. And that's one of the things that I see throughout a lot of the uh, seasons of Sister Wives is that they have like a little bit of information and some good advice, but then they lump that good advice in with a whole bunch of bad advice and bad practice, business practice, and they wind up in horrible situations. Now, the big thing is Cody or Robin could argue that, well, we have all kinds of collectibles. We have art, we have uh, jewels, we have jewelry, we have cars, we have uh, real estate. But if you don't know what you have and you don't understand the value of what you have, or Conversely, you do understand the value of what you have, but you don't know who to sell it to. Then it doesn't matter whether you know that this piece of art is worth $100,000. If you don't know the person who is going to buy that piece of art, what that does is you'll listen to somebody that suggests that you buy this art, you'll buy that art, then you'll have to hire that guy or give that art piece to that dude at, at a fraction of the cost or a fraction of the value because you don't know who to sell it to, but he does. And he winds up giving you a piece of your, your action, your art, your stuff, your belongings. There's also another part of this whole thing. You think the TLC is on your side. The truth of the matter is the, the, the crux and basis of your reality of being a reality TV star 
one of the most highest rated shows or episodes on TV on reality TV is the foreclosure episodes where the people come and take all your stuff and they find out that you're broke and you have to tell they film you telling your wife that you got to move out your house because you can't afford to be there anymore. So they have zero incentive to help you financially, making sure that you're you're safe and sound and that you can move forward, especially being as though you're one of the most unlikable characters, if not in, in reality show history, certainly in Sister Wives. Robin and Cody are at the bottom of the likability charts all the time. So if they lose everything and they can run that episode, TLC can run that episode and they promise you a couple nickels and a couple dimes so that they can film you crying and sitting on the porch packing your stuff up and having to tell your kids that they got to move and they're going to be living in the car for a week while you guys try to figure out how you're going to get a room at the uh, Red Roof Inn, then they're going to do that. Trust and believe me that they're going to do that. At one point, I thought that reality shows were actually hiring accountants before they cast some of these people to make sure that they were going to bankrupt themselves while they were on the show. Investing in real estate. Investing in real estate is a good idea, and I'm not going to criticize investing in real estate. Uh, you know, if you can live in an area where you can invest, it's better to invest, buy a house than to rent. That's true to a point, but it's only better to buy a house if you can afford it. It's good to buy real estate if you can afford it. It doesn't do you any good to have property all over town and you can't pay the taxes on a property and you wind up losing that property. And of course, you think in your mind that the banks are going to protect me. And if the banks, oh, if I couldn't afford it, then the bank wouldn't give me the money. So clearly I can afford it. I was able to secure a mortgage or I was so able to secure financing. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Incorrect. What a bank looks at is can I make money off this guy? So if I can, if a bank can give you a loan, they can charge you for that loan and you'll pay on that loan and then you'll be late a few times and they can rack up some fees and fines and costs and things because you're late and then they can foreclose and take that property from you and you still owe them money. They'll do that every day of the week and twice on Sunday. How do I know this? Look at how they run the credit card business. That's basically what the credit card business is. They give, they don't give credit cards to people who can afford them. They don't want the people who can afford to pay the credit card off each month. They want the people who are going to pay the minimum balance of that credit card each month. And hopefully you'll be late paying the minimum balance so they can charge you a fee on the account or they can raise your interest rates on the account. So yeah, a bank will try to screw you over and they will give you loans that you can't afford to pay back. And even when we talk about credit, this is what I mean. When you have a lot of the fancy jewelry, the cars and a big house, it doesn't prove that you're wealthy. It just proves that you have the credit to be able to buy the stuff. It just proves that you were able to secure the finances or the financing half the time. It doesn't prove that you can actually afford it. That's a different conversation. Now, the one thing I can say is that throughout the seasons, Cody prioritizes material wealth over financial discipline and personal mental health. Nothing scares me but poverty. Nothing. Now, the funny thing about material wealth is that it can be taken away or lost. And if your identity is tied up with what you drive, where you live, what you wear, and the jewelry that you have on, then you are in trouble if these things happen because you'll be lost. You'll lose your identity, your, your sense of self. And it can be devastating when this happens. Now, in, in this case, what we're watching is when Cody loses his wives, he didn't just lose companionship. He also lost 60% of his financial income at that time. So we can take the position that Cody has yet to recover, at least where we are in season 19, he's yet to recover from the loss of his family, the loss of that wealth, the loss of that financial uh, advantage that he had with those wives. And how does he make peace with that loss? Like relationships, if you break up a month later, you know, everything was perfect. Best relationship ever. How did I ever mess that up? When you look back on those relationships, you'll always see those relationships as being perfect. 
You always see that your time with that money, oh, I had that job, it was amazing, it was incredible, it was the best job ever. Even though I threw up every time I had to go into work, I used to get headaches before I would go in. I would sit home and cry when I'm not working, thinking about going back to work because I felt so bad about being there. Then you lose the job and you feel bad because you don't have the job anymore and you just have this rosy colored view of the position that you used to have or the money that you used to have or how much advantage you used to have. But that's not who you are. That's what you used to do. So you have to comp compartmentalize it and categorize it in a different way. The thing is, is that if you view things in through those rose colored glasses, that will drive you crazy and it's not productive at all. <laughs> it's not gonna make your situation better. It's not gonna bring your relationship back. It's not gonna bring your job back. It's not gonna bring your wealth back. It's just gonna make you feel bad and you just kind of lay in that misery and that depression for a longer period of time. Like as a, for instance, if we watch Cody in the, in the timeline of how things kind of worked out, he started Sister Wives. It was a windfall of money coming in because of Sister Wives. He was getting all kinds of deals. He was getting all kinds of checks. He was making all kinds of money. He had a book deal. All this stuff was happening. He was living high on the hog. Then a few years after that, and when they were in Vegas, all of a sudden, the show wasn't doing as well. They were talking about canceling the show, pulling it off. Cody renegotiates the money, so he takes less money. Then, a few years after that, they moved to Arizona. All of a sudden, his wives start peeling off like a banana. And next thing you know, he's down 60% of his money. And he's still trying to, he's still spiraling and trying to recover because he lost not only his wives, but again, he lost his identity on who he was. He's his, his ability to acquire and get new stuff and more stuff and be in a financial position that he wants to be in because his greatest fear is poverty. And he's trying to avoid that poverty at all costs. And it's costing him his identity, costing him his happiness. And according to some reports now it's costing him his current marriage because he can't let it go. He can't move on. He can't get past where he used to be because he's still living in the past and still trying to look through rose colored glasses about how wonderful the family was and how happy he was, even though he said at the time while he was in the family that he was miserable. The one thing I can say is, is that when these things happen, whether it's a loss of a companion, a loss of a position, whatever the case may be, you have to accept where you are now. It's not that you don't remember what it was like to be where you were but you have to accept where you are now, what your financial condition is now. And then once you accept that, it's easier for you to re recalculate how you do things. What I would suggest is if you have that kind of a st sharp decrease in funds, you have to start to formulate a budget. You have to come up with a good budget. You can't spend money like you used to spend it. You can't buy cars that you used to buy. You might have to sell a car or the cars. You might have to downsize your apartment or your house from like a big house to a smaller house. You may have to move like this is maybe why they're moving from one house in a uh, Flagstaff to the other house in Scottsdale. Just saying, these are things that have to happen when your money comes down. Let me know what you guys think about my prospect that this is not a career for Cody, but in fact, he hit the lottery. And like most lottery people, he's kind of blowing it. You're blowing the bag, Cody. Pick the bag up. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think down below. That's my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality, and I'm out. Cause I've been